Do you remember when AMD was a pretty simple and easy proposition to understand? They were kind of like stick a V8 in it, put some big wheels and tyres and brakes on it. All right, home time, pass the Stein. Well, things are a little bit different now, and this new E53 is a slightly more nuanced proposition. A few years back, I'd say somewhere around the point of the late 2000s with cars like the cultish W204C63, AMD started to really pay attention to the chassis and make its cars drive with some serious sophistication. Of course, since then, AMG has been going into all sorts of new market segments. I mean, think of the A45 AMG. But since then, four-wheel drive, turbocharging, electrification, hybrid modules, they've all been putting the traditional V8 at risk. I mean, the new C63e performance has sent a lot of AMG fans into a tailspin, me included. And this E53 doesn't have a V8 either, but there's quite a bit to talk about under the skin. All right, let's start with the name because this is an E53, not an E63. Now this shouldn't be confused with the previous E53, which was just a bit of an AMG sort of half ha halfway house. This instead features a load of bespoke componentry and also a load of chassis upgrades as well. In fact, this will produce up to 603 brake horsepower, which is incidentally the same as the old E63S. However, how it gets to that figure is slightly more complicated. Right, so the numbers we're going to give you refer to models fitted with the AMG Dynamic Plus pack to keep it simple and avoid me getting hammered by you lot in the comments if I get them wrong. Right, so under the bonnet is Merck's 3-litre straight-six petrol engine that on its own produces 442 brake horsepower and 560 newton metres of torque. In addition to that, there's also an electric motor that's mounted inside of the gearbox casing that produces a further 160 brake horsepower and 450 newton metres of torque. Now together, they produce that 603 brake horsepower figure, but it is only available during a race start or a launch control function. Now normally, this engine will produce a maximum of 575 brake horsepower consistently, which for the AMG nerds out there will recognise that number from the old 5.5 litre by turbo V8 that they brought out before the 4 litre. Now all of that power is transmitted through AMG's slightly complicated 9G TCT transmission, which is essentially an automatic gearbox with a wet clutch packaged in there as well. Now, it's a bit tricky to describe, but what it means is that when you're in a sporty mode, the shifts are really sharp and have a torque cut, and when you're in a soft mode, it means that it's just nice and comfortable. That power is, of course, transmitted to all four wheels, but being a 53 rather than a 63, there is no decouplable front axle, which means there's no drift mode. Here's the kicker, though, because unlike the C63e Performance, which has a little 6.1 kilowatt hour battery pack, this is a proper plug-in hybrid. So it comes with a massive 28.6 kilowatt hour battery pack that'll get you up to 100 kilometers or 62 miles of range on a charge. It is worth noting that the C63 e Performance's battery is bespoke to AMG and designed to intake and expel energy as quickly as possible. Now this E53's battery is a slightly more traditional plug-in hybrid designed for maximum range. This is why AMG is calling this a long range plug-in. To help keep the batteries topped up on the go, AMG has also crammed in a 60 kilowatt DC fast charging capability in there too, which is pretty unusual for this type of plug-in hybrid. If you think this all sounds like it'll weigh an awful lot, well then you'd be right. But by keeping the electric motor up front, AMG hasn't had to fit an additional transmission to the rear axle, nor the added cooling, electronic circuitry, or the hardware needed to send that e-power back up to the front wheels as it does in the new C-Class. This all saves a small amount of weight and a lot of complexity. Now, annoyingly, at the point of filming, we don't have a precise weight figure, but I've been told it's somewhere in the region of 2.3 tonnes. Performance figures are still pretty impressive, though. This saloon will hit 62 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds, which is 0.4 seconds slower than the old 63S, and the estate will take another tenth. Top speed is about 174 with that AMG driver's pack. But the truly great AMGs haven't just been about raw grunt, rather pairing it to an engaging chassis that's able to exploit it. This is where the new E53 really differs from the previous generation, as there's a load of chassis upgrades too. So the front end is new because of that 11mm wider front track, which means it's got new wings and a new front bumper. Also, if you're a bit of a design nerd like me, something I really loved about the previous generation E63 is that AMG completely changed how the front end of this car was constructed. Now, the standard previous generation E-Class had a bonnet that went all the way down to the front grille. But what AMG did is kind of what they've done here in putting the nose slightly further down and creating the sort of nose cone effect. Now, specific to the 53 are these vertical grille strakes. And in this case, they're actually finished in black because this car has a night package, which is what we expect to be standard here in the UK. Now, curiously, AMG has fitted this car with coil springs and a new dual valve damper, kind of like modern Porsches. 
Now, this is unusual, but what it should do is it should give the car a more direct and connected road feel, which is something that we're finding a lot of manufacturers are doing now in this larger space, despite the extra weight. This specific car also has the 21 inch forged wheel option, but there are also 19 and 20 inch options in overseas markets. However, the UK is expected just to pick up these bigger ones. Now around the back, the changes are slightly more subtle because those rear arches are the standard width, but you still do get four exhaust pipes and a lip spoiler. There's less AMG specific stuff to talk about in here, but what is here is brilliant. These AMG performance seats will be an option and are superbly comfortable and supportive. And it also comes with a bespoke steering wheel. This one is fully kitted out, so it does have lots of carbon, carbon on the steering wheel, and an AMG specific Alcantara or Dynamica, I think they call it, steering wheel. Inherently though, the basics are good. Build quality is fantastic, and the sight lines and visibility is also very impressive. Most UK cars will get this full with super screen, but in any case, the standard car does come with a unique veneer with a little AMG logo milled into the side. Space in here is perfectly fine for a family of four or five, typical A-class really, but there is an estate model if you need that extra versatility, which I think might be the model to have. Here's the thing though, thinking about it all a little more philosophically, do we think AMG purposely left the 63 nameplate alone because it knew there might be want for space above this? That's the curious thing about AMG's whole exercise of change. While many of you, and me to be frank, might not fully understand or support the direction they're heading in, it doesn't mean that they're unwilling to absorb that feedback and make some changes. And to be honest, I do understand why AMG is in something of a state of flux right now. I mean, they're here trying to leverage their Formula One hybrid technology, create faster and cleaner cars for the marketplace, all whilst living up to that really impressive previous generation of V8 models. Now, I was a bit afraid that today was going to be a bit of a demise of the AMG sort of video, but actually seeing this thing in the flesh and even reading through the numbers despite that enormous weight figure, I feel like this might be really good to drive. We'll have to wait and see.